for peak oil, so you have um, invested in gold, you hold gold, gold physically. Mm -hmm. uh, what other things have you personally done to prepare for those types of... Well, I'm, uh, I'm renting a house now in uh, close to my home in uh, where I went to high school and college in Culver City, California, close to Venice Beach. And even though I'm renting, I'm gradually reworking the backyard to do soil restoration. This is a backyard that house is from the 30s, but it's had nothing but uh, chemicals poured on it to grow grass, and it's, it's a lot of work involved in soil restoration. And uh, I'll be planting, as soon as I can get the soil to a point where I can use it organically, I'll be planting some little food crops there. I have uh, insulated my house, uh, and I'm renting. And I didn't even ask the landlord for the money, because I did the calculations. I used R30 insulation in the attic, and uh, it'll pay for itself this winter on the money I'll save, with heating costs rising. Uh, so those are little things that I'm doing along the way. And the other thing that I do is uh, I, I network a lot. Uh, many people, in, in, including me, have toyed with or even attempted to go to relocate someplace else. And I find it's difficult because it, I'm much more comfortable at home where I know the streets and I have friends. And, uh, but networking around the country also provides options. Keep your social networks very together. Take care of your tribe, so to speak, uh, so that you have choices and you have people who will actually give a crap about you when, when it hits the fan and who will be there to help you. Because the government isn't going to do it. They're going to have any money left anyway, and, and they will not care about that. Uh, I have looked at, in depth, government contingency planning for various emergencies. Um, and it certainly as it relates to peak oil. I've traveled to Washington, D.C. many times. I was born there. And the government's first priorities are to take care of infrastructure, whether it's the Wall Street infrastructure or the highway infrastructure, of course, which is falling apart anyway. Uh, and their last concerns, we saw that after Hurricane and Katrina, Hurricanes Katrina and Rita, their last concerns were to take care of the people. And I think we're still seeing it now in Houston and Galveston this year too, uh, although the press stories are being suppressed. So the bottom line is nobody's going to take care of you. Take care of yourself and find friends and family who will take care of you as well. It seems like for a person who still has some available credit, maybe they do have their house paid off mm -hmm. or they do have their credit cards paid off, mm -hmm. Would it make sense in, prepar in preparing for rough times ahead to maybe start using some of that credit right now to prepare, like building up a, a food pantry in their house or using some credit to That's a big question. renewable panels or uh, solar panels on the roof? Or, I mean, Well, there again, you have to do your own analysis. If you look at, uh, let's take solar. That's a very good example. There's no fixed rate, but for the, the last data I saw was it takes about five years uh, to pay off a solar panel on what you, for what you invested on the savings that you get. Now, there's some new technology that I just saw in the Silicon, the Silicon Valley from, that came from that they got some spray on stuff now that may cut that time down to two years, which is great. It's a good investment and uh, I'm, I'm just finishing a new book now called A Presidential Energy Policy and a big thing will be feed-in tariffs so that if you generate more electricity, you're guaranteed to be given a profit for selling energy back to the grid. That's so important. Uh, but there again, I'm not a big fan of hoarding. Hoarding creates panic. In other words, I wouldn't have uh, 20 cases of meals ready to eat if they suck anyway, they're terrible. <laughs> uh, but you know, tons of canned goods and you know. So do you disagree with life after the oil crash dot net? Matt Savinar. I love Matt. Um, certainly a little prudence. P prepare for disruptions. In other words, there will be disruptions. We have seen disruptions. Uh, excuse me. And uh, short-term disruptions. But th the whole concept of hoarding is great for a short-term problem, but not it's no long-term answer, obviously, because you're not generating anything new. So uh, it's a balance. But in, in terms of using credit to it's a tough decision. Uh, in other words, if I had a credit card that was that I was paying eight nine percent on, I might use that credit. If I had a credit card that I was paying twenty two percent on, I wouldn't use that. That's the kind of thinking you have to engage in. Uh, 
So maybe using a little credit, but being cautious about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the issue is the same. Right now what's happening on Wall Street in September, October 2008 is a liquidity crisis. In my book I described it, in my lectures I talked about it, in my newsletter from the wilderness for years I talked about it, liquidity. What does liquidity mean? Cash on hand. Something that works now. Show me the money, Jerry Maguire. Okay. Liquidity is the biggest survival tool of all. Um, because it gives you options. And so, for me, that's why I keep coming back to save, get out of debt, get out of debt, get out of debt, save, get out of debt, get out of debt, save. Have you seen the films like uh, Maxed Out and IOUSA? No. And those types of films? No. I, I think you'd find those interesting. No, I probably, yeah. Okay. Uh, before we go, um, You've written the book Crossing the Rubicon, but now you have a new book coming out. Could you just tell me a little bit about that book? Its title is A Presidential Energy Policy. Is it just for the president to read then? Or? No. What I, what I do is I, I, I will put the reader, the reader, in the chair of being the president. Give them the base. It's 135 pages. Rubicon was 600 pages. I mean, it's in the Harvard Business School, but it's not something you read overnight. Right. It still sold 100,000 copies. That's great. That's great. So, uh, but this is 135 pages because we're not hearing from either Barack Obama or John McCain now anything that makes any sense about energy. Okay. So this is so I have this real advantage. Nobody else is doing one, and I have no competition, so I can't miss, you know. And please, please improve on on what I do. But it will outline the choices in a realistic way, so that everybody can read and understand. And these are some steps that I think should be taken, must be taken by the federal government to save lives in this country and to avoid. I mean, unfortunately, as we've seen with the Georgia-Russia U.S. conflict which we provoked, uh, you know, there, there, there could be a nuclear solution to peak oil, and I don't want that nuclear solution where we're all glowing. No, so, uh, I, I'm going to finish the book. We're here at the ASPO in Sacramento. I'm 95% done. I had to come here to see some people before I went back and wrote like the last chapter and a half. Four publishers are beating down the door right now. So I'm very confident. I, I know we have a very good book. And uh, it, it should be out early in 2009. It'll be something anybody can read and, and get their head around. Any last thoughts? Yeah, we're all screwed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> but not everybody has to go down. You know, build your own life preserver and use your family and tribe to build your own life preserver. Take care of yourself. Get out of debt. Okay. Thank you. Okay.